Hi, this is Manuel Delta Lima to Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel on this sunny and hot day in Germany. Uh, we have about 30 degrees, as you can tell, I'm sweating. Today's topic is about VHF, UHF. Obviously not the usual type of content on this channel, however, there is this radio, the Quancheng UVK5, bracket 8, that is available for around about 20 bucks if you look for a discount. And this radio can be modified with uh, alternative firmware and can be used to do CW and SSB. And if you remember back the old days when uh, those radios that could do VHF, UHF, CW and SSB were really expensive, this is a game changer. Now with the availability of those cheap radios, um, you obviously need to have an antenna uh, to work with that because that's another, a whole different game, the VHF, UHF game. And David, DL1DN, QRP Lifestyle, uh, designed his uh, Moxon antennas that are really practical for uh, transporting in your rucksack, backpacking, hiking. Um, that was a topic that I always had in mind because uh, Yagi obviously is very big, um, hard to disassemble, a lot of parts involved. And even though we are talking about very short wavelengths, um, this is, it, it adds up. If you put it in your rucksack, need to climb a, a hilltop or something. So this antenna really solved the problem for me because you can easily disassemble it, put it in your backpack, and be gone. This is really practical in my opinion, so I really like this antenna. However, David did not provide his uh, source files, he's only selling them. So if you do not have the possibility to print out parts for yourself, if you do not want to do that, to organize the tubes, for example, cut them to length, whatever, then David is selling those antennas. Both antennas readily built as seen here. He's selling for 69 euros for a limited amount of time plus shipping. Uh, I think he regularly uh, is planning to sell them for 89 dollars. And I'm not into uh, selling you anything. Um, I'm also not into making a commercial for David. I'm into DIY, building yourself and uh, making, making stuff available to you. So. What we decided to do, or what I decided to do, is I'm, I designed those antennas based on David's idea, myself, uh, different dimensions. I designed the 2 meter Moxon from scratch uh, and also added a little design features that I liked uh, to my version of that. I'm going to show you in a second. Now, this is my version of those two antennas. Uh, the obvious difference, uh, yeah, well, basically I... I uh, reduced it to the max. Um, I reduced the tube diameter. I have added a center pole mount because in David's case it was mounted on the in the front. I want it in the center so it's it's more in balance. I've added this universal universal interface, let's call it like that. Um, that would allow to adapt easily to different uh, pole diameters. And the only thing you need to generate is this bushing. I'm having here two different poles um, to show you the principle of that universal uh, interface. Now, I, I left my third one at home. The, the pole adapter has a cone shape inside, so it will be a press fit on the poles that are also cone shaped. And then you just slide your antenna on and you can change that easily to use it on different poles. That was the idea behind that universal adapter. And if you don't want to build it yourself, go to David's channel, you can buy it from him. If you want to build your own set of these antennas, very cheap, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how. Building the 70 cm Moxon is super easy. All that you need is the printed file, some cable ties, that's an SMA socket with a rectangular back, but it has to have a screw on nut, some kind of wire cutting tool and wire. And in this case, 
This is 22 AWG wire, outer diameter 1.3 millimeters, it's uh, 0.5 millimeter squared. Um, yeah, show you how easy that is, you don't need any measurement tools. Basically the 3D print files does everything you need. You start with putting in the SMA socket where the rectangular portion fits the rectangular cut. Put on the washer, screw on the nut. Next step is to put the wire through the corners of the reflector side. Stick the wire through the hole. Secure that either with a drop of super glue here or in my case I simply use cable ties. Easy and correctable in case something goes wrong. Now pull that straight. Pull that straight, cut it off here, put it through the remaining hole, pull that straight and again secure it with a cable tie. Now cut off the wire that is protruding on the bottom, cut off the cable ties. That's already the first step, very easy. Next step goes a little bit like so. So, going to put that here, put it through that hole, pull it straight, secure it with a cable tie. Cut off the excess wire, cut off the excess cable tie. Now I'm having a look <clears throat> at where I need to go with this and I'm cutting it off just at the right spot. This one I'm going to make ground and the same we need to do for the other side. Secure it with a cable tie. You already guessed it. And cut it at the right spot so you are able to solder it. Now I'm going to remove the insulation, solder it and I'll be back in a second. And here you can see the basic principle how a Moxon works. We connect the coax cable to this SMA socket. And this is basically a dipole that's folded. You can see that here. And this is a reflector that's folded. So this arrow shows the direction. It's a directional antenna. And because it's folded, um, we are narrowing down the total width of that by that making the antenna more compact, but all the dimensions here count. Uh, the width, the, the depth, the distance between reflector and uh, dipole. And that's the principle of a Moxon. The 2 meter Moxon is all, also ultra simple to build. Um, it involves a little bit more steps, but nothing too complicated. Obviously, you need the 3D printed parts. That's the T end piece, that's the middle section that goes on the pole and that's the, the very tip of it um, which contains the feeding point and obviously shows the direction. And I made it pointy to look a little bit more dangerous as the great dictator would say, but also to show the direction where the antenna is radiating and receiving and to make me even more aware from the, the ground level where I am and look up to the sky, I made a different contrast so I can easily see where's the direction. Then you need certain tube. Now let's talk a little bit about the tube. This is 10 millimeter PVC tube with a wall thickness of one millimeter. This is very very common in Germany. You can buy that at every hardware store in case you want to build that and you are not in Germany you need to look the internet. Those 
things can be bought really cheap like for um, I think two euros per such one meter piece. You need two times one meter to build one antenna made from PVC plastic, 10 millimeter outer diameter, one millimeter wall thickness. Those need to be cut to length obviously, four times 337.5 millimeters and two times 107.5 millimeters. To make cutting to length easier, I've even included this tube cutting aid to the files. You can print that out as well. The way this is meant to work is you clamp it down to a table, uh, insert your tubing, put it to a hard stop like for example your wall. Uh, you need to obviously position that thing to the right length. So it would line up with this slot. The distance between here and here is your cutting length. Then you clamp it down. You just shove it to the end stop. Insert your saw into the slot here and can easily make a straight and rectangular cut. This way you can easily uh, build more than one antenna. Let's say you do that for a club event or just to cut those four. It's not needed, but I thought it is a handy tool, so I'd include it. The next thing we need is the wire. We need to cut the wire to the length. Those two shorter wires are the dipole elements. They are being cut to 460 plus 10 millimeters, so 470 millimeters of wire for the dipole and this is the reflector that needs to be cut to 1004 plus 20 millimeters so 1024 1024 millimeters 1 meter and 2.4 centimeters once you have cut your wires you have cut your tubings you have your parts printed out we can start with the assembly i'm going to show you how easy that is step one is to push the bnc socket from the bottom and add the washer and the ground connection to it. Before I do that, I bend it. You can use a cutting tool, but be careful not to cut it off. Put it on and then screw on the nut. This is a little bit fiddly and tricky, but you will make that. I've just re-bent the ground connection because it prevented me from getting the nut down. So have that also in mind. Now I can simply screw it to the bottom. Okay, now it is screwed in. Now. Here's why we have that plus 10, 10 millimeters uh, on both sides of the reflector. So plus 20 on the reflector and plus 10 on the elements. What we need to do is put in a knot. And I'm trying to make that as close as possible to the end. And I figured that assuming this with 10 millimeter extra would be appropriate. See, now I have a nut here, I'm going to pull it real tight. What I do now is pull it through here, now it's secured, see? This is the reflector side, remember the long one. So we are pushing it now through 337 millimeter, through the T, through the next one, put it through an insulator and put a knot there as well. Secured. See, now we already have half of the antenna built. This is very obvious. The short ones need to be pushed in around the center. Now we have those elements. We put a knot in here as well. Uh, this has only a, a knot on one side, the dipole elements. So we only added plus 10 millimeter for the knot. The other side is soldered to the BNC socket. And that's the second element with a knot. Okay. Now, one is obviously going through here. This is going to be soldered and one is obviously going through here. This one's obviously going to be soldered, but before we can do that, we need to push those through the remaining rod. Here. 
into here and solder it. The same for the opposite side. We're going to shove it through the remaining tube. What comes outside here needs to be soldered here. I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be back to show you the result. Now I've soldered the wires to the ground connection to the center pin of the BNC and the antenna is basically ready to set up. All that's left to do is to get this center element, push it there and now we can assemble that. Just follow the wire, push everything in place, be careful not to rip something off. And that's about it. That's the antenna ready to use. Now only only thing I need to do is put in my adapter for my pole, put it on the pole, connect the BNC, that's it. Now if I'm ready, simply going to disassemble that. And back to the rucksack. Now, this is the antenna on the pole. And this is the SWR plot. I've repeated that measurements with a 70 centimeter version. Uh, no surprise, it worked as intended. And uh, so it's time to wrap up this video. I'm Hoping you enjoyed that content, that kind of new content, because uh, there's no excuse anymore not to enter a VHF UHF, climb up a mountain and try out how far you can get with 2 meter 70 centimeter SSB or CW. This radio and those two cheap antennas, either if you can't build it, uh, buy it from David or build it yourself like the tinkerers we are. Um, really cheap entry into VHF, UHF, uh, CW, SSB and have some fun up the hills and up the mountains. See you next time. 73. Bye bye.